Hi everyone, my name's Tom. I'm going to do a walkthrough today on the Jayco X19H. And I'm going to get started up here in the front with the propane tanks. So, this RV has two tanks on it. This is your regulator right here. And this little arm is your indicator on which tank it's going to pull from first. So, right now it's pointed to this tank or I can turn it to this tank, it does not matter. If you have both of your tanks turned on and the indicator's pointing over here, it's gonna pull from this tank first. So when this tank runs out, it's automatically gonna pull from this tank over here. Lever's not gonna move, nothing's gonna happen, it's just gonna start pulling from this tank. That's pretty convenient, except when it does run out and it switches over, you're not gonna know. So then you could be in for a surprise a couple days later and you're totally out of propane. So what I suggest is leaving one bottle turned off. That way when this tank runs out, you know you're out. So you can come out here, switch the lever to the other tank and turn it on. But at least now you know in your mind that you have an empty tank. So if you go into town, you can take this tank with you and fill it up. Moving on, you've got two deep cycle uh, marine batteries here. Um, they have the caps on them like the batteries back in the old times. So you can take the caps off looking there to see the acid level. In the summer is the main time you'd want to do that. So you take a cap off, you look in there. If liquid is covering the lead plates, you're good. If it's even with them or below, you're going to want to add distilled water to it. Just cover them up. You don't need to fill it to the top and that'll keep your batteries in good shape. Put this cover back on. We're gonna move over here to the left side of the trailer. Just touching on this real quick. These both fold out on each ends and I'm not gonna pull this one out. I'm gonna wait till I get in the back and I'll, put, I'll show you on that one. They're both identical. Let's do them both the same way. This is your Hot water, this is your water heater. This is where you're gonna get your hot water from. Um, down here on the bottom, you've got a master on switch. You can go ahead and leave it on out here because you're gonna turn it on and off from the inside. If for some reason you're not getting hot water, you have two reset switches right there. If you'll come out here and push those, make sure that's still on you shouldn't have any issues. This also runs off of propane and electricity and that is also decided on the inside. Right here you have a couple of stickers with information on them. Um, these two tell you how much the trailer weighs empty and it also tells you how much weight you can put in it. When you're traveling it's the only time that matters. When you're sitting still at an RV site, you can put however much weight you want to. It, it doesn't matter. One of the important stickers that I always like to talk about are your tire pressures. So right here it says six, 65. I, gotta, yeah. I can't see. Real, yeah, okay, yeah. It's, it rec Jayco recommends 65 pounds of air in those tires. So before every trip, if you'll get yourself a good tire pressure gauge, like a digital one or a round dial gauge with a needle on it, check your tire pressure, you're not gonna have any you know, major issues. Now that doesn't mean you're not, we're gonna run over a nail and get a flat, but you're not gonna have a blowout due to excessive heat. Your tires aren't gonna wear funny. So that, that's very important to check the tires before you go on a trip. Over here, we call, we call it an outside shower. It's really mainly for if you're out hiking, you get your feet muddy or your dog gets muddy, they can come out here. You can turn, you've got hot and cold water, turn this on and clean up. Now, the way you're going to get pressure out of this is if you're hooked up to city water, which is right here, that city water pressure is going to provide water out of, out of this handle. 
The other way is if you have water in your freshwater tank, which is over here, and you're out dry camping, boondocking I call it, you go inside, turn the water pump on, then you'll be able to get water out of this faucet right there. So city water hook up here, this is if you're at an RV site, you get your take your own garden hose, preferably uh, restaurant grade, which is going to be blue or white. Hook it up here, hook it up to the faucet, turn it on, that pressurizes the water system and you'll have water at the toilet, sink, and shower. Fresh water tank, this is you put your garden hose in here, you can use the same one for that and fill it till it overflows and that'll fill up your fresh water holding tank. Now that's something you're going to want to fill when you get close to your campsite. You don't want to have that tank full and carry that extra weight. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense really to do that. This outlet is the back of your furnace. Um, your furnace operates off propane only. Like it says, it will get hot. So if you have little kids, grandkids with you, make sure you let them know not to play in this area. Most RV sites come with cable or satellite hookups. And that hookup is right here. You do have to provide your own um, coax cable. They don't provide those. But you hook up here and it's already wired to inside for you to watch TV. Moving down, this is what we call a black tank flush. So what that does is you've got your gray tank and your black tank. Your black tank is your sewage, your toilet. So after you pull that handle and you drain it, you can hook your a separate water hose. Don't use the same one for your drinking water. Hook it up here, turn it on, and there's a pipe in there with holes in it, several of them, and it sprays inside that tank and it cleans it out. You can also, um, while you're doing that, close your black, let that black tank fill up a little bit, and then with the weight of the water and gravity, help rinse all that out. When you get through with that, close your black, open your gray, that's your sink and shower water. That will rinse out your sewer pipe and also rinse out your sewer hose. And then it, it tells you right here, black tank handle, and then that's your gray handle. And then you have this cap. that goes over the end when you're through. You always want to do the black first. That's the dirtiest. Your gray, do that second. That'll keep everything clean for you. This is your 30 amp power cord. This is your cord. It's going to go home with the trailer and that is again the 30 amp. And it just has a little collar right there that screws on to help hold that on there. The sewer hose I was talking about, this cap pulls off and that hose will slide in there and just put your cap back on and that's a nice place to carry that. Spare tire, um, same tire, same wheel that we talked about over here, so also be sure and check the air pressure in that as well. So up front, you have one of these pop-outs, and this is the same one in the back. So what you're going to do is pull down on this handle. It releases it up there. Come over here, pull down. There's cables inside here to hold this, so you do not have to put any braces underneath it. And when we go inside, I'll show you what you do inside for that to stay up. Let's go ahead and walk around the corner. Right down here in the corner, you have a light for your steps at night. You can see that, I think, a little bit down there. It's that blue reflection right down there on the ground. It doesn't look like much during the day, but at night it puts out quite a bit of light. Moving around the corner, 
you have a door latch that comes in handy you don't want the wind to catch that door and slam it so that just hooks into this little slot right there I'm gonna go ahead and open that this is another cable and satellite hookup in case the hookups are on this side of the trailer and then you also have a 110 outlet if you want to put a little table out here put a TV on it oscillating fan uh, stabilizer jacks you have one at each corner and I will come back in a second I have to find the handle for that but that's a three-quarter inch you could put that on the end of a cordless drill and zap that and that foot comes down to the ground you have one at each corner and I'll come back to that in a few minutes and show you how to do that um, you have a stove inside runs off propane it has an exhaust fan and the exhaust exits right here you do have a little flap in there you have to push up that opens that up and then the exhaust from the stove will come out right there and then when you're through be sure and push it snap it closed that way bugs or cold air won't get in there okay have the tool for the stabilizer so you just come over here and crank this down and that foot's going to come down there and hit the ground when that foot hits the ground give it two more turns and that'll be enough pressure that's all you want to put on it at each corner because they are just stabilizers they're not jacks if you try and lift it it will bend the jack <clears throat> let's go inside and I'm going to show you how to finish putting that out your bed okay so you take this rod you have this loop it's permanently attached in there easiest way to do that right between those two rivets put that and push it back and then this snaps inside that little hole right there and that keeps that up then you just take your mattresses unfold those and there you've got a nice size bed and then just do that in reverse for this bed to come back put it up at this end of the mattress right there there's an electrical plug in so if you're plugged into shore power outside with that 30 amp cord that I showed you and you have two of these one for each bed this is a mattress warmer and this works kind of like the electric blankets did and that, they actually work very well um, this is your they put two solar panels up on the roof that you asked for this is your monitor um, it'll show you that the batteries are charged up hundred percent this has been that's little symbols the sun and it's been charging the battery for about 48 hours i think is how long this has been on there um, i would suggest on um, reading your owner's manual on that because this panel does do a lot and i think you'd get more out of it if you read that instead of listening to me ramble on that does work very well you have a uh, stove it's operated by propane this is your backsplash fold it up turn the gas on this is your igniter rotate that clockwise and that lights your burners that's how all three of those burners work like that your oven is the same way the oven control is right here you would turn that to the flame on the oven though you do have to push in hold that in for about 10 15 seconds rotate the same igniter and you're going to look i'm not sure you can see this real good but underneath this plate 
in the very back is the igniter so you can look down there while you're rotating and you can actually see the spark back there and see when the flame lights before you close your lid on your stove if you can hold your hand on here it's cool to the touch then go ahead and close this if that's real hot it's possible this thing will shatter regular microwave up top just like the one at home there's nothing fancy nothing you need to learn on that same type you have your exhaust fan and you have your light um, your heat is going to come out of vents on the lower side so you've got a couple of those throughout the RV and that's where your heat's going to come from Okay, over here we've got your refrigerator. This is a real nice refrigerator. This works off of electricity or battery. So when you're plugged into electricity, it's going to be running off of that. If you unplug it, it's automatically going to go to battery, which is safe to have on going down the road. I don't like running propane down the road because you have a fire going out there. But traveling down the road, your batteries are getting charged from your tow vehicle and it's also getting charged from your solar panels so very good Re really efficient just the best refrigerator in my opinion that they have out there right now down below it you have your breaker box this has your 110 breaker switches in it your 12 volt fuses most of these are 15 and you've got a couple of 40s so for example um, your air conditioner won't work. You want to come over here, make sure none of these have been tripped. If you have a light not working, come over here and check your 12 volt fuses. Um, so care, buy some of those, carry some with you. Again, they're 15 and 40s. So right, this switch right here, that in the on position, the red light comes on, that heats your tanks in the extreme cold. It won't freeze. It's not enough to make it hot it's just barely enough so that it, it won't freeze on you this thing right next to your breaker box that's a propane leak detector so if you have a propane leak that's going to beep like your smoke detectors do so you'd come over here to your stove make sure your handles are turned off go outside turn your propane bottles off if you're st if you still have a leak your batteries are Gonna, are probably going to be really low or dead. That's the other reason why that would be because that is wired directly to your batteries up front. Um, this is your furnace right there. That's where, you're, where more of your heat's going to come from right there. And it is operated over here by this thermostat. And you have this switch on top that's on. And then you adjust your temperature down here at the bottom. Let me see. AM, FM radio right here. You have speakers inside, and then you have a couple of speakers outside. So your inside speakers are zone one. Your outside speakers are zone two. Um, this folds out into a little bed right here just like so and then just lift it back up and then push that down and then this side operates the same exact way it was that other end that i showed you um over here around this corner if you decide to put a tv in here your coax will hook up here and then you have a button that says ca tv that's for cable then you have one for antenna so you come over here press it so it's on antenna you have an antenna up on the roof that's um, boosted with the 12 volt power that'll draw in a, um, a better signal the antenna doesn't go up and down or turn it's fixed but You'll get a really good picture with that on right there. And your air conditioner, that is 
right up here it's controlled right here with these switches so blue side of course is cold and then turn it the other way is your fan over here there's a heat strip in there and that this will provide a little bit of heat so if you get up in the morning you know there's a little chill in the air you can turn this on instead of the propane furnace and this will take the chill out for you and I believe bathroom? oh yes bathroom last you've got light switch and a fan switch on the wall your toilet you have a foot pedal right down here in the front so if you push down a little bit that's going to put water in it then you put some water in it then you can go ahead and flush it the you're going to want to keep chemical in here that keeps it smelling good so you know you don't get that bad odor so right before you use this toilet the first time you're going to want to buy a bottle of it that comes in liquid powders tablets gel read the directions it might say pour half that bottle in there along with say a gallon of water you pour that in there you take off you go camping you're ready to use the toilet when you're through dump your black tank like I showed you on the outside flush it out close all your valves and then you're gonna put that chemical back in it again so now you've got chemical in there it's all ready to use for your next trip when you get through camping the next time repeat that process so for the rest of this trailer's life it's gonna have chemical in that toilet um, I'm not sure if this is your first RV or not but they do recommend that you use RV toilet paper, either RV toilet paper or septic tank toilet paper. And uh, control panel? Yes, control panel. And over here by the door, this is our control panel. This is where you check all your tanks, um, all your goodies like that. So. We're plugged in to electricity right now, so with us being plugged in, it's also charging your batteries. So if you come over here and hit the battery, it lights up all four lights up top. That tells me that the battery is being charged. If you want to see what kind of shape the battery is in, unplug it from electricity, hit the battery, and then it'll read up here whether it's empty, a third full, or full. Your fresh water tank, I showed you on the other side, that's where you put your garden hose and fill it up with fresh water for dry camping. Press that button, it shows it's a third full. Next to it is your black tank, it is empty. Your gray tank, it has two thirds water in it. It's not dirty water, we put water in it so we can show you, you know, how this panel works. Over here on the right, water heater. So we're plugged into electricity, that's cheaper than propane, so I'm going to get hot water off of electricity. If you're dry camping, you can use, get hot water from gas, and then if you're not hooked up to utilities, no electricity, no water, you can turn on your water pump, and this is going to draw water from your fresh water tank, so you can flush your toilet and shower. getting a big rainstorm right now. This button is for your awning. So awning extend, push up, retract it, push the button down and bring it in. In a heavy rainstorm like we got right now, you, um, you want to bring that awning in. You don't want to leave it out as well as a high wind. If it's pretty windy, bring that thing in. Um, also, never leave your trailer. If you're going to go to the lake, go for a swim, boat ride, always bring that awning in. Please don't leave it out. Just takes a quick big gust of wind, it'll tear that thing up. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. Or if you have any suggestions on content you'd like to see, we'd love to hear about that. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Vod RV.